Hi everyone. Today we will be talking about Amazon Q, how Amazon Q can help enterprise to increase the employee productivity. Before we go into today's topic, myself, French Ganeshan, I work as a senior DevOps engineer in Trellix. So before we understand Amazon Q, I wanted to help you understand what is a large language model. A large language model is a combination of Wikipedia, Google News, scientific papers, and Git. So with all together, they are called as a large language model. So chat GPT uses GPT-3 and GPT-4 as their large language model. So behind the screen, they will make a call to the LLM and fetch the data from these LLMs. So I wanted to help you understand what reinforcement learning with human interaction is. So reinforcement learning is chat GPT has deployed multiple workforce of human to help them not to have any toxic behavior. So chat GPT is getting trained with human interaction so that it provides non-toxic behavior to the responses whatever it is trained from. So as we are learning what Amazon Q is, we will want, we will want to understand what a generative AI is all about. So a generative AI is like a creative artist inspired by past works. So generative AI is already learned from the text, from music, from the code. It gives you a new pattern, which is very artistic. That's the reason it is called as a generative AI. So now that we were talking about how to increase the productivity in any organization. So if you wanted to increase the productivity of a marketing manager, of a sales manager, of an R&D engineer, how do we do that? How Amazon Q is going to help us? For example, if I am a marketing manager, I am joining a new company, I wanted to understand the products of the company. For example, if I am joining AWS, I must be aware of all the services. I must be aware of the instances because when I'm talking to the customers, I might have to inform them about the newly available services or the services which suits their requirement. As a sales manager, I must be knowing what is the sales my team has accomplished in the last quarter or what is the sales that they will be going to accomplish in the next quarter. So as an R&D engineer, there are multiple proof of concept which I'll have to go through. But if I am getting a short summary of all the proof of concept, that is great. So if I have a tool, something like that, I wanted to use. Likewise, for a developer, he needs a co-pilot or an AI assistant who can increase his productivity. The same thing applies to a help desk employee and a product manager as well. So Amazon Q helps us to solve all these problems. So once we deploy Amazon Q, there might be few challenges. So what are those challenges? Is Amazon Q accurate? Is Amazon Q secure? Does Amazon Q value time? Yes, it provides you the accurate results. It provides security. For example, if we have a data which is exposed or to the other teams, which should not be done, then your Amazon Q has a guardrails to control the scenario. And it can also be integrated with the identity provider. We'll see how we can integrate Amazon Q with the identity provider. It also values time. So implementing Amazon Q is a matter of few clicks. And it is a no code, low code device as well. So where else you can use Amazon Q? You can use Amazon Q for your businesses, 
for building on AWS, on QuickSight, on Amazon Connect, and in supply chain industry. So it can be used in Amazon QuickSight for creating Power BI reports. It can also help you build the infra on AWS. It can be used in business for increasing the productivity of the employee. So on my left-hand side, I have five data sources. I've connected all these data sources to an Amazon queue and integrated Amazon queue with the identity and access management. So that's how access management works with Amazon queue. So whenever users sends any query, the Amazon queue receives the query and it sends only the filtered response based on the permission the user has. So some of the key features of Amazon Q. Can we have some kind of guardrails to reduce to toxicity? Yes, we can do that. And we can also restrict some data. For example, if you have a data which is exposed only to the SOC team and not to, the, not to any other teams in the organization, yes, you can do that. You can also block some specific words or phrases that can never appear in your responses. So you can have some pre-written phrases for these kind of questions. So let's see how Amazon Q works. Okay, so I'm asking Amazon Q, what is compute resource? what is compute resource is amazon q faster we saw one of the challenges whether it is valuing your time yes it is giving what is a compute resource it says that computing power and capacity that is used to run applications and workload okay fine so what is container Okay, it says container are ways of packaging and deploying applications. Okay, I want to ask something very challenging. Let me change the file system, file system permissions, but my pod does not, does not have root access. So can this provide a response? Let's see. Yes, it does. Okay. So what, how many instance type you have? How many instance type do you have? And if you see all the responses, it has a sources. So the sources says that from where it has picked up the data. So it is giving me the instance type it has. So it's very difficult for me to go through all the summary. Can you show me in bullet points and as well give a count on instance type? Okay. So let's see if it it can do this. Okay, so I want the instance type in bullet points. Yes. So it gave me the bullet point. So it says the data source mentions five different EC2 instance types. Okay. So this is good. So I let me ask a question. What is, okay, who is Narendra Modi? Okay. So my data source doesn't have any sources on Narendra Modi ji. So let's see if it provides me the answer. So it says I'm afraid I do not have any information. My data source in the provided data source, it doesn't have any information on who is Narendra Modi. So your Amazon queue is very accurate. So it did not find anything in its data sources. So Amazon queue is amazing, right? So you can also try Amazon queue, but let's see how to create Amazon queue. So for creating Amazon Q, I have you have to go to Amazon Q. Amazon Q. Okay, 
I have already created an application called, so you have three types of Amazon key. One is for your uh, light. This is free tire. And uh, the other one is pro. And the last one is the developer pro. So I'm using this one. So I have created an application in Amazon Q. Okay. So Okay, so I have created an application called as demo in Amazon Q. So this is integrated with Confluence and all the sources, whatever was pulled is from Confluence. So this is a URL which I logged in using the user to send the query to Amazon Q. So now that we have understood how Amazon Q works, so let's try to understand how to create an Amazon Q. So go to applications, say create application, give the name of the application and then you can say create a new service row. And then I have chosen IAM Identity Center. You can integrate this with the provider, like have any Okta authentication or a SAML authentication. So here I am not checking anything for the encryption. I do, for the purpose of this demo, I do not want encryption at rest or at transit, but for an enterprise which is concerned about security, you can check this. And you can just say create. We will see about the other three steps here. So I, okay, I have created this. Okay, I'll show you here. It takes some time to sync. So here it's loading. Okay. So here I have chosen the data source as here I can give, I can say edit, edit, and you can you have to say update. So here I have connected all the data source. I am using a native retriever. So in my architecture page, I showed five data sources but you have 40 data sources which you can use and i am not using kendra because i don't have any 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 integration with kendra as of now for this demo so i have set up a confluence page i will show you how to do that so this is a non-production environment so i have chosen non-production and i'm keeping number of units as one in order to keep the cost low so here there are 40 data sources, but I have connected to Confluence. So I have connected to Confluence means I have given my Confluence URL and I have also given the API key so it gets authenticated. So now that it is getting authenticated, I am using a service role and my user called as Lenchty Connection has access to this Amazon queue. So this is how you create an Amazon queue. So we have understood what Amazon queue is. When I talked about identity provider, I mentioned that I will come back to it later. So in the identity provider, in the application tab, you will have to have the Amazon queue. Only then you will be able to log into Amazon queue. And whenever you add new data into your Elastic, sorry, into your Confluence, then you might have to sync Amazon Q. Okay, so here I have used Confluence and I have created four blocks from where the sources, the Amazon Q is picking up. For example, I have this instance type added. So it was picking up the data from here. So likewise, it was picking the data from all the others because I have added all these pages in the, in the Confluence blog. So you can also do that. You can create a 30 days trial account, uh, which is open for everybody. You just need a Gmail ID. So you can have any email ID 
and enroll to Confluence Cloud. So we saw the demo how to create Amazon Q and uh, also on Confluence Cloud. So, but I just wanted to give a closing note. So we'll have to leverage using generative AI to increase our productivity. But you all are aware that generative AI could provide you responses, which are hallucinations. It means that it's not a fact, but your generative AI provides you the answer. So let's leverage generative AI in our day-to-day -day job and increase the productivity and remove the fears of losing our job. So thank you everyone. Thanks for joining my session.